Hi, I'm Tim. Do you own one of these? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to run Home Assistant on a QNAP NAS. And yes, you can also run automatic updates. So if you want to know how, keep watching this video and I'll show you. So here we are at my computer and what I've done is gone to the Home Assistant webpage, which is www.home hyphen assistant.io now once you're at the home page what you need to do is select getting started from the top menu this will take you into the installation page as you will see and what you need to do from the installation page here is scroll down to the section where it says install home assistant on other systems which will be near the bottom of the page now all you need to do is select view tutorial and then you will take you into the alternative page here. Now, what you need to do is download the file for Home Assistant for VMware ESXi forward slash vSphere. And it's the .ova file, as you'll see here. So select this and then save the file somewhere on your computer or ideally save it directly to a folder on your QNAP NAS. Now I've already downloaded the file as you'll see we've got haos underscore ova.14.1.ova dot 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 so I'll just cancel this. Once you've downloaded it you can exit the Home Assistant web page and then what you need to do is log into your QNAP NAS as you'll see I've already done here and I'm at the desktop and what we need to do first is install the virtual machine manager. So to do this, select the App Center. You should have an icon on your desktop. If not, then select the top left menu icon and then select the App Center from the menu. Then this will load the App Center with all the apps that you have installed. And I'll just maximize this. And what we need to do is for the search option. So you'll see a magnifying glass in the top right corner here. Select this and type in virtual. Add this that then bring up some search results and as you'll see we've got network and virtual switch we've got virtual here usb server and we've got virtualization station now virtualization station is the one you want to install so just click the install button for virtualization station and just wait a couple of moments for the virtualization station to be installed you'll see it's now saying processing and now you'll see it's installing so just wait for it to install it should take probably just a couple of minutes, depending on the speed of your QNAP NAS. And you will now see that the virtualization station has now changed to open. So we've got an open button next to it, which means it's fully installed. So what you can do is close the App Center by clicking X at the top here at App Center. And then this will take you back to your desktop and you should have virtualization station already showing as an icon on your desktop. So what you need to do is click on it once to open it. Then from the welcome to virtualization station, you will see that there's some list of information. Now you'll see that we have ticks against some of the information. So QTS firmware, we're on the version, which is OK. So it's got a tick virtualization technology for the Intel CPU, which is in the QNAP NAS is OK. At least four gigabytes of memory. I have four gigabytes in my QNAP NAS, so that's OK. And then you'll see we've got an exclamation mark next to virtual switch. Now, when you click finish, so the finish button here, the system will create a virtual switch and a network connection will be interrupted for a few seconds. So where it says virtual switch in the exclamation mark, it means that when you click finish, that issue will be resolved as the system will automatically create a virtual switch on your QNAP NAS. So all you need to do is click finish, wait for the switch to be created. As you'll see, we've got a spinning wheel there and you will now see that it's created the virtual switch and it's automatically opened up virtualization station as has taken us into the overview screen. You'll see we've got virtual machines here in the overview. So we've got zero running, zero suspended and zero powered off. 
For the CPU, we've got two logical cores. For memory, we've got provisioned three gigabytes and allocated is zero. So this basically means that we've got no virtual machines set up at the moment. So what we need to do to create the Home Assistant virtual machine, you'll see at the top, we've got create virtual machine. So what you need to do is click the drop down arrow. So don't click on create virtual machine button here, but click the drop down arrow at the side of it here. Then what you need to do is select import virtual machine. Now you will see we've got an import virtual machine window appeared. So what we're going to do is select the folder icon here, and then it's asking us to provide where the home assistant virtual machine file is located. So as you can see, it's opened up a folder on my computer called downloads, and you'll see we've got the HAOS underscore OVA hyphen 14.1 OVA file. So click this once, then click open, and then you'll see in the files we've now got HAOS in that bar there. So what you need to do then is click next, and then in the virtual machines where it says VM name, home assistant. So you can either change that name or leave it as it is. So in this case, I'll leave it as home assistant. Then for the description, you can type anything in that box there. And then for the file location, what we need to do is select a location where it will store the Home Assistant virtual machine and all the files. So to do this, again, we'll click the folder icon, so the yellow icon. Then what it will do is open up the shared folders on your NAS. So what we're going to do is select a share folder where we're going to store the Home Assistant operating system and all the relevant files. So in this case, I've automatically got a folder called web created. So I'm going to put my Home Assistant in web. However, if you want to create a specific folder, then what you would have to do is go to the menu at the top left corner, then go into file station five, then wait for the window to load. And then what you can do is create a shared folder here on your NAS. Then once you've done that, you can close file station five, and then you should have the folder appeared here. If you haven't, just click cancel, then go back into file location again by clicking the folder yellow icon, and it should then reappear. So in this case, as I said, I'm using the web folder. So I'll just click on web once, and this has put a tick against it. So then what we do is click OK, then click Next. Then this will take you into the option two for customized settings. You will see for resources, we've got an Intel Core i7. CPUs, we've got two. Memory, we've got two gigabytes. So all those options in there can be left as default. So all you need to do is click Next, unless you want to allocate more memory, in which you can by increasing the slider or decreasing it. So Home Assistant recommend that you have at least two gigabytes of RAM. So I wouldn't reduce it below two gigabytes. So just leave it as two by default. So click Next. Then for the configure hard disk settings, you will see we've got hard disk one, 32 gigabytes, IDE and write back. So again, leave all these at default and click next. Then for the configure network adapter settings, just leave this as default and click next. Then for the configure CD DVD ROM settings, leave these as default again, click next. And for video card, you can leave that as Cirrus. For audio device, you can enable this if you want to pass through audio to your home assistant. For the USB controller, I would recommend leaving that as USB 2. And then for the auto start policy, I would select always so that if your NAS restarts, then it will also automatically restart your home assistant virtual machine. For the startup delay, you could leave that as 60 seconds. And for keyboard, just select the keyboard which you want your language to be in for the keyboard. And then all we need to do is click next. So just to confirm the option, what you need to enable or change is audio device. So enable this. And then for auto start policy, select always. But in this case, I'm selecting none just because it's a test environment. And then for keyboard, select the keyboard for the location 
which you want to use. So then once you've done that, click next and then click create. And then all you need to do is wait for about three or four minutes for the virtual machine to be created in the virtualization station. So you'll see it's now created the virtual machine, which it just did. And now it's importing the virtual machine, which does take a while. So just be patient while it actually imports it and gets the virtual machine all set up and ready. So you will now see that the import of the virtual machine has been successful. And you'll see now we've got for the overview, we've got virtual machines one. So one virtual machine is powered off. And then for the status change logs, we've got the virtual machine home assistant and the status is powered off. You'll see for the CPUs, we've got two logical cores and for memory, we've got three gigabytes. So what we need to do is now start the virtual machine, unless you've actually set it to auto restart, then you may not need to do this. But to start the virtual machine, all you need to do is click on home assistant in the status change log, or you can select virtual machines from the left side menu option. And this will take you into the list of virtual machines. So then to start home assistant, what you need to do is under the action column, you'll see we've got a gear icon. So select the gear and then from the menu that appears, select start and just wait for home assistant to start. Now this will take probably about 10 or 15 minutes for it to actually first start up the machine and create the home assistant instance. So please be patient while it does this. And if you want to check the status, of how it's loading and starting. All you can need to do is in the bottom left corner here, you'll see we've got a black square with what looks like some text in it. So click this and this will automatically open a web page tab and you will see it's providing some text where it's installing and loading Home Assistant for the first time. So just be patient while it does this. And once it's finished, you'll get the command line prompt which I'll show you in a second once it's finished creating the virtual machine. So you'll now see that we've got home assistant and welcome to the home assistant command line waiting for supervisor to start up and you'll see we've got an IPv4 address and also an IPv6 address. Now this IPv4 address is the IP address that you use to access your home assistant server. So make sure you make a note of the IP address or in some cases, you may be able to use homeassistant.local colon 8123 as shown under the home assistant URL. So it depends on what network equipment you're using as some will require you to use only the IPv4 IP address or some you will be able to use homeassistant.local colon 8123. So I'm using Grandstream equipment. So I'm able to use homeassistant.local. So now that we've got the HA prompt in green here with the arrow, we can close that window and we can also log out of our QNAP NAS. So what we need to do is just close the virtualization station and then log out of the QNAP NAS. And then at the address bar in the browser, what we can do is now type in HTTP home assistant dot local colon 8123 and this should load your preparing home assistant web page so this is your new home assistant virtual machine and while it's preparing home assistant this could take 20 minutes or more so i found on my qnap nas that it takes about 10 minutes so while it's preparing home assistant you may get some error message saying cannot get network information and fail to fetch logs and there's a retry button so just be patient as these errors are fine so just wait for it to still continue preparing home assistant just ignore those errors and wait until it's finished preparing installation and as you will see we're now being taken to the welcome creates my smart home so all you would do is click creates my smart home then create a username and also create a password and confirm password and then select create account then for the home location select your location and then click next select the country where you reside select next and then just select next on these helpers help you 
options and then you'll get the all set message let's start your private smart home adventure so click finish and this will then take you in to home assistant where you can add your devices integrations create more users and so on so that's how easy it is to install home assistant as a virtual machine on a qnap nas so that's it for this video so if you want to know how to set up home assistant and do various things then please see other home assistant videos on my channel which i've released and we show you how to do various things in home assistant so i hope you found this video helpful and useful thanks for watching this video and more videos are coming again soon so take care and bye for now